excuse me, sorry. Hi everyone and welcome to the garden this morning. It's an absolutely gorgeous day today. We had a fabulous weekend in Colorado. We went out for my parents' 60th wedding anniversary. It was so much fun. Got back last night and we're absolutely thrilled to, um, to be here in the garden with you guys today. Thanks to all of you who joined me early in the chat. It's so much fun. I know I say that every week, but I'm usually here 15 minutes early. Our wonderful moderator, Everything Sunflowers and More, Christy, you guys met her on last week's live stream and on the video over the weekend, is here a full hour early. So please join us in the chat. We have a great time chatting it up. We live stream every Monday at noon Pacific time. And people are getting to be friends, sharing about gardens, sharing about personal things, and we just have a great time. So today's uh, live stream topic is four tips that you can do to grow your vegetables a little bit longer in the winter or even throughout the winter months. So I'm super excited to share my tips with you. And I also wanna hear your tips for growing in the winter wherever you live. So before we jump into that, I want to um, just hop into the chat here and welcome everyone who is here. Um, just see who's here today. Let's see, I know we have, uh, I think it was Angela from Greece, and she was asking or commenting that she would like to share some tips from growing in Greece. So I know a lot of viewers would really like to hear that. So Angela, please feel free to pop some tips in the chat on how you grow in Greece in the winter time. Um, let's see, we have Lakita Strong. Hello, Lakita, so glad you are here today. Tamika is here, Heaven's Essentials. Hi, how are you doing today? Kim P, uh, thank you so much for wishing happy anniversary to my parents. And you guys can check out a few pictures of our weekend over on my Instagram story. Uh, my Instagram is at CallieKim29. And it was really just so much fun. And have you guys ever had those um, evenings or those weekends, maybe some great family time that you just think, this is something I want to last forever and it's something I'm gonna, gonna remember forever. Well, it was one of those weekends. My parents renewed their vows. They also, um, so we had a little ceremony for them. They also, um, my mom opened her wedding dress that she hasn't unboxed for 60 years. And you guys, I'm telling you, it was in perfect condition. All they did was put it in a box, wrap it in tissue and tape it up. None of the fancy um, preserving that people do these days. That's all they did in 60 years later. You guys, it was absolutely beautiful, perfectly white, no yellowing, no holes, no nothing. It was gorgeous. So check those photos out and I think you guys will enjoy it. We just had a wonderful, wonderful time. So thank you so so much to everyone who's wishing my parents happy anniversary. Uh, we have Jocelyn here. Hi, Jocelyn, rain, be rain bees plant and germinating. Hello, piano master, mad dog digger. Randy from Kashmir, this is awesome. Frank Jones from Florence, South Carolina, Smitha. Uh, I think Smith is from India and people here from all over the world. What an absolute blast. So before I jump into the tips, I want to share a viewer of the week today. We haven't done that for a while, but I definitely don't want to let today go by without sharing. If you guys did not watch um, <clears throat> Saturday's video, oh, and, and Jerry, camera guy is in the chat here as well. If you guys missed Saturday's video, if you don't watch any other videos on our channel, please go back and watch that video. We were sharing stories from the garden. We were sharing Christy's story, who is our moderator, and she went into um, just a lot of detail about some of the struggles she'd been through with her health and with depression and how gardening really helped her out of that. So please go back and watch that. Our viewer of the week is actually a commenter on that video and someone who is here in today's live stream. Honestly, guys, when we got back last night and I read through the comments, I was just brought to tears. I was so touched at people who had the courage to share that they'd been through health issues, they'd been through depression or just um, you know issues in their life, how gardening really helped them. So thank you so much for having the courage to share and for leaving comments on the videos. Um, but the one I wanted to share today especially touched me because it's a member of our community here, here that is here every week. And the viewer of the week is My Backyard123. And hi, I know you're here out there today. And she shared how she struggled with years with fibromyalgia, spinal arthritis, has not been able to work in constant pain, also struggled um, just with pain and how the cold and wet make it worse. And I just want to read her comment here. It's a little bit of a long comment, but hang in here with me, guys, because her story is just amazing. And thank you for having the courage to share. 
Um, her doctor is her husband and tells me and told her that she had to exercise. Even though I believed him, I still laughed in his face. How can you exercise when you can hardly move? I was sitting outside one day when it hit me. I have two nine by nine garden beds just sitting there growing weeds. If I was to figure out how, I can grow my own veggies. My answer, sitting in the mud. I love it. I started small, spaced everything wide enough so I can sit there. It was a start. It got me motivated in the morning to check up, check up on everything. The first year was training my body with my husband helping me get up, and now I needed to train my mind. That winter, I looked up gardening. Just like Christy, I found Kim and all kinds of info. Then I looked up how to make raised beds, made more raised beds, space them wide enough so she can sit in between them built grow this year i bought grow bags and built two more raised beds i have plans for next year to help bring in some extra income thank you kim for giving me the motivation to move again to work through the pain and exercise it got me out of a depression you've taught me so much and i'm now teaching my husband we have come closer together i literally guys i was just in tears reading this comment and i am so proud of you my backyard for having the courage to change even though it was hard for getting up figuring things out and making a solution to improve your life and look what it's brought about. Gardening is just true therapy. So please guys go back and watch that video. It's so inspiring and please read through all the comments because you guys will be brought to tears and encouraged and motivated just like I am. And if you're struggling with some issues, um, just like Christy was and just like my backyard is, I hope it really encourages and inspires you as well. So, Let's talk about, guys, you are so welcome. My backyard is our privilege and our honor to have you as a viewer here on our channel. So let's talk about winter. Now in Colorado, my dad is a gardener too, and he was just telling me that they were expecting a frost, I think tomorrow, <coughs> excuse me. <clears throat> so I think a lot of you might be in that same situation um, where winter is closing in. And I think uh, someone in the chat mentioned they were supposed they might be getting a frost or they were supposed to get a frost last night and didn't expect it and we're really glad that it didn't happen and their vegetables were okay but guys do keep an eye on the weather cuz you never know when it might happen so here in california we only get light frosts so even if you live in a southern climate um, you can still do some things to help extend the uh, growing time of your vegetables so let's jump right in here guys um, the first tip i want to talk about is growing under <coughs> excuse me I've got something in my throat let me grab a drink <coughs> is growing under cover um even if you live in a warm winter climate you can cover your warm weather vegetables on those cold nights we've actually had some nights dip down here in the 40s already so you can cover those vegetables and help extend your growing season and if you're expecting frost you definitely want to put some type of winter a winter cover over um, some of your garden beds especially if your cool weather vegetables are still kind of small and maybe just getting established to really help um, protect them it pro provides a light layer of protection to really help extend the growing season so i did set up a little winter cover here this morning you guys might have, might have seen my instagram this morning now i don't need this right now because it's, a, it's actually a pretty warm day but i just wanted to show you guys how easy it is this is a container here this is a smart pots container and all you have to do, you really don't have to get fancy, is just get a piece of plastic. This is a, I don't know what, what um, thickness of plastic it is, but you can get a piece of plastic. You could only even use like a trash bag or something like that. And this I actually um, doubled over and then I have a couple stakes in here in my garden bed. I don't know where the stakes are, but I put a couple stakes in here in the garden bed just to kind of raise the plastic up so that it didn't smash down the plants and then just put a clip over it, um, just to put a clip to uh, hold it on and secure it into place. So you don't have to get fancy. You can use this plastic, you can use a trash bag, you can even use like a heavy um, old quilt that you might have, um, you know, sitting around and cover those vegetables to help extend your season just a little bit to either grow your cool weather vegetables or grow your warm weather vegetables just a little bit longer. Um, one thing too that I know a lot of people like to use um, if they have little small seedlings in their garden is just use like a milk jug with the bottom cut out and then just place that over your small little seedlings to protect them from the frost. Now very important though when the sun comes out during the day 
especially if you live in a climate like mine, um, you wanna remove this cover because it's gonna get warm up very fast under there in the sun and you don't want your little seedlings, you know, getting too hot and frying um, and then dying. So keep an eye on the weather and make sure that you take your, your covers off um, during the day. So I'm gonna go into the chat now and I wanna hear from you guys uh, what types of things you use to cover your garden, if anything, and um, if you're getting frost in your area this week. Oh, hey, Jeff. Jeff is here in the chat. I was chatting with him a little bit on Instagram a little bit earlier. He lives um, in Southern California, I think in like Palm Desert area, and he's got some really nice looking tomatoes that he rolls in and out of his garage because it's, it's really hot there to grow. So Jeff, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. And yes, he's asking, is this a zinnia? This one got a little bit, a little bit munched here, but yes, this is a zinnia here over my left shoulder. Um, we did plant, replant some of the scarlet runner beans right behind me and I popped some zinnias in and it's really exciting to see them blooming. This was like a second crop um, in my garden here this summer, second crop of beans. Yes, Jeff lives in Joshua Tree. Okay, Rita uses landscape fabric. That's a great idea, Rita, um, especially if you live in a, in a warm climate because it does have some holes um, to let your plants breathe. Okay. Um, Let's see here, what else, landscape fabric, anything else? Um, Tamika started, uh, I'm, I'm thinking you're, you started seedlings in your sunroom, so I get a bit of sun and I open windows for the cool air to come in. That's a great idea too. If you have a sunroom where you get lots of indoor light, that is a perfect place to grow yourself a winter garden and really extend your growing season a little bit. Um, or even grow in there year round. So great idea, Tamika. I'm really glad that you're gonna be growing in there for the summer. Okay, uh, Janine, can you use plastic on veggies? Um, I'm assuming that you're talking about this plastic cover. Sure, use whatever you can find as long as you take it off during the day when the sun comes out so that you don't, so your veggies don't overheat. Okay, Catherine, hello. First frost tomorrow here in Washington State. Okay, I'm so glad you're here today, Catherine because this will be a perfect tip for you. Find whatever you can around the house and cover those vegetables to protect them tonight. It's crazy. I know a lot of people do get frosts in October, especially if you're as far north as Washington or maybe into Canada. Here's a question from Piano Master. How do you wash your fresh, fresh picked veggies? Especially if growing in a manure bed, someone suggested soaking them in vinegar for 15 minutes. And this is from Piano Master. Piano Master, that is exactly um, what I would recommend. Um, all, you, all you have to do is fill your sink and put maybe a couple tablespoons or so, fill your sink with water, put a couple tablespoons or so of vinegar and let them sit for a little bit. That way it kills off any of the bugs that might be in there and anything that you, any dirt or whatever that you wanna wash off. And then I usually um, will rinse them again before I um, you know, bag them up or, or put them in the refrigerator. A little tip for helping your vegetables um, last longer in the refrigerator is to wrap them in paper towels. That absorbs all the extra moisture. That extra moisture is usually um, what makes your vegetables spoil quicker. Okay, and here's a question from Smitha. And again, I believe Smitha is watching from India. And Smitha, I know you've asked this before on Instagram, I believe, and possibly on YouTube, a tip to get rid of monkeys. I have absolutely no idea how to get rid of monkeys because we don't have them here in Southern California. So if you live in an area where you do have monkeys and have that issue in your garden, I'm sure that's a real problem. Please give Smitha some suggestions. Okay, one more question, then we'll go back to our second tip here. Um, Amy Frank, just getting here. Welcome, Amy, so glad you're here. But I'm in SoCal also. When is the best time to plant garlic? Amy, usually a really good time to plant garlic for most people is maybe three to four weeks before your first frost date. That way it gives your garlic kind of time to get established before the cold weather hits. Then garlic does go dormant in the cold weather. Um, so it'll take like a nice winter's nap. You're not going to see much growth out of it. And then once it warms up, it's going to start to grow. However, here in SoCal, it's a little bit different. I usually plant mine in November. We don't always get frost. So usually November is a good time to plant it. And you will definitely see some growth over the winter time if you're in a warm winter climate. 
but you'll still let it grow all winter long and then you can harvest it in the early summer. So I've got a good video on how to grow garlic in a warm climate. So you definitely want to go back and check that out. And I've grown organic garlic from the grocery store before and I've also purchased garlic from like Baker Creek. Um, and I did have better luck with the garlic I purchased from Baker Creek. So you might want to look online for some seed companies and get some going. Okay. Lots of questions in the chat flying by guys. I'll answer what I can for sure. But let me just go back and talk about our second tip for growing uh, uh, veggies in the winter. The second thing I would definitely um, recommend and suggest is to grow frost tolerant vegetables. So um, here in Southern California, the winter time is the best time to grow those cool weather vegetables. Um, I'm talking about like all the greens, the lettuces. It's a perfect time to grow lettuce in the winter time here in SoCal. Um, also, if you live in a cold climate, greens are a great thing to grow in the winter and then use your little winter cover here. They're frost tolerant and I've never grown them in hard frost before. So those of you that have can let me know how they do, but I know they do really well in um, when we get light frost. We don't even have to cover them here but in the cold climates, they may do really well under cover. So any of the greens, kale, chard, broccoli, cauliflower, are all frost tolerant greens. These happen to be collards under here. Maybe I'll, I'll let you guys see this now that we've talked about it. Um, these are collards, which we planted in our fall garden, um, for our fall garden, and we did some videos on how to plant a fall garden. They're super frost tolerant and also very heat tolerant, so they're really good greens to grow year round. You can find a great list of cool weather greens in my fall garden seed collection on my website, CaliKimGardenHome.com. There's 15 varieties in there. So if you're wondering what to grow, um, you can head over there and see a big list of them and also grab that fall garden seed collection if you need seeds. Oh yeah, and I meant to mention today too that I decided to run a last minute um, flash sale where I'm offering 30% off. Now I've never offered 30% off my seed collections before. And the sale only lasts for today. So I want you guys to get started for a good price. You wanna use the code, what's the code? Monday, because <laughs> it's only today and I'm just announcing it here on the live stream. Um, and it's good through midnight Pacific time. So you can head to my website and grab one of the fall garden seeds or any of the other 18 seed collections there. So second tip is to grow cool weather vegetables. You're gonna have the best luck with extending your growing season with vegetables that will take frost. Okay, so first tip, grow undercover. Second tip, grow frost tolerant vegetables. So what I wanna know from you guys is what is your favorite frost tolerant vegetable to grow? Because I know a lot of you grow in very cold conditions. And um, I would love to uh, hear uh, what you have to say about that. And we're getting some questions here I see in the chat about neem oil. Jeff is asking, is it safe to consume neem? And neem is an organic, um, uh, substance that you can spray on your plants. And I, I usually try and spray it on maybe a day before I harvest or harvest everything first before I spray. Um, I've never sprayed and then eaten things right away, but you know what, it's, a, it's organic, so it's definitely much safer than any chemical pesticides. And um, you know, again, just make sure you wash your vegetables, but uh, I wouldn't really have a big, huge problem even harvesting and eating neem um, the day after I spray. So yeah, sure, Jeff, no problem. Okay, let's see here, any other questions? Here's a question from Nisha. Nisha, uh, welcome back. She was gone last week. I'm really glad to have you back today. On lettuce, I don't get sunlight during the winter season. Will they keep growing without sunlight? Um, you know what, you're just gonna have to give that a go. I actually have some lettuce that I just planted. Let's see if you guys can see right over there in the veggie pod, and you can see it's completely shaded already. It maybe got an hour of sunlight this morning, maybe two hours, but I already have little seedlings coming up. Um, so Nisha, you know what? Just give it a try. You'll definitely need some type of sunlight. It will grow very slowly. Um, sometimes you can grow it in indirect sunlight. I've had pretty good luck on my windowsill with indirect sunlight during the winter time. So you just give it a go and try it out for the spot that you have. Even if you have a little windowsill inside, I would pop some there on the windowsill or a simple little um, grow light um, works as well indoors. Okay, let's see, question here from Brandon. Hi Brandon, how are you doing here? Why do my tomato flowers fall off? Okay, that's a great question. We have had 
a lot of heat here in Southern California and that's usually the biggest reason why tomato flowers fall off is because the temperatures go above um, uh, 90 degrees. And Christy, I saw you just popped that uh, in the chat there. That's actually the sale from last week. So uh, that one's not any good anymore. So if you could just pop the sale in for this week, which is 30% off with the code Monday, which is good through tonight. So um, yeah, the code for the 30% off sale is Monday. Oh my goodness, I just saw a super chat here. So I'll come back to your question about tomato flowers in just a second. KRS Grace, thank you so much for the $20 super chat. That's amazing. Um, and the comment says here, Thank you, Callie Kim and team for all you do. Can hardly wait for your book in December. Wow, thank you so much. Sincerely, Kim Grace from SoCal. Thank you so much, Kim. I really, really appreciate that. And I'm looking forward to you reading my book and we deeply appreciate you supporting us through pre-ordering it. And I'm um, super excited for that to come out and there's gonna be tons of great tips for how everyone can grow your gardens in a quick, simple, inexpensive way. So Kim, thank you so much for that. Okay, so back to the um, tomato flower issue of tomato flowers falling off. When the temperatures hit 90, that's just too hot for most of the vegetables. The production really slows down. Oftentimes it makes the flowers um, dry, up, dry up and drop off. So if that's the issue that you're having as far as heat goes, try using some shade cloth to cover your vegetables during those hot months or hot times, hot days, and that will really keep your vegetables producing and help prevent the blossom drop. Um, your vegetables still aren't gonna grow like crazy during the heat, but it'll definitely, definitely help. So uh, right over here, I actually shaded some vegetables while we were gone this weekend because it was in the 90s when we were gone. And you can see I've just got some shade cloth draped over. I do have some cool other vegetables under that shade cloth and I really didn't want them getting fried in the heat. So you can use old sheets, you can actually purchase shade cloth, um, but yeah, that will really, really help. Okay, let's see here. Uh, Jackie, hey, Jackie, it's so great to see you on here today. Broccoli and cauliflower and spinach and radishes are my vegetable, are my go-to vegetable to grow in my garden. Those are great cool weather vegetables, um, especially the radishes, Jackie. Aren't they so easy to grow? They just pop up um, within a couple of days and they love the cool weather and they grow very, very well um, in the winter time here in SoCal. And I'm actually gonna be doing a uh, video or posting a video this Wednesday, I believe, on growing radishes. So you guys wanna stay tuned for that. Okay, oh, another super chat from Grace Holland. Hi Grace, how are you doing today? Thank you so much for the $5 super chat. Really, really appreciate it. I'm so glad that you're joining us today. And you've been on our live stream several times as well. So we do thank you for your support. Okay, let's see. Oh, and we have a new, a first timer here, Memes Garden. First time in your live chat. Thank you so much. So glad that you're here. If you're brand new, this is a wonderful community. It's so much fun. Please say hello and let us know where you're watching from. Okay, let's head, head back and talk about our third tip for growing vegetables in the winter. The third one is um, uh, something I love to do is to grow indoors. And I really like to grow indoors year round in the heat and in the cold because it's just really nice to have a little bit of my garden on my windowsill. And if it gets too hot, I can grow things that won't grow in the heat outside. If it's too cold, I can grow things that maybe won't grow in the cold outside. So if you guys have watched my channel for very long, you know that I love to grow a couple things indoors. The first one is herbs. Herbs are one of the easiest things you can grow inside. This is basil. I took a little basil cutting from one of my plants that was growing outside. I rooted it in water and then I potted it up I want to say it was maybe a month or so ago and this grows on my windowsill it's an absolutely beautiful plant and it's so much fun just to pinch some off throw in scrambled eggs throw in water throw in whatever but the great thing about it is it doesn't even get it's not even under a grow light it doesn't get a lot of direct sunlight but it grows absolutely beautifully so if you have any basil in your garden root it up I, I did a video on that a few weeks ago. You can check that out and grow this inside during the winter. And it's gonna give you a really big lift when it's cold outside and you don't have any basil growing outside. And it just tastes so good. Now, the other thing I love to grow indoors during the winter time is lettuce. 
And this I planted, I wanna say about three weeks ago. And you can grow this in a window that gets a couple hours of sunlight a day. You can grow it under a grow light. This one, I think I did half and half. I started it in the window and then moved it under the grow light. And I'm actually, it's time to harvest it. I'm gonna be eating this today for lunch. So isn't that beautiful, guys? One thing that's fun about lettuce is you can grow it in the winter time and plant some every couple of weeks. So here I planted another little container. I got these uh, containers at the dollar store, so they're super cheap. And you can see this one is sprouting up and it'll be ready to harvest in about three weeks. So you can plant your lettuce inside every couple of weeks and then you still have something growing inside during the winter months and it's gonna give you a, such a lift. And Angela's Garden Sense, yes, it absolutely does. It has drainage holes. I posted a little video on this last week on Instagram. I just poked holes in it with a nail. You just fill it with contain, uh, fill the container with soil and then with potting mix, and then sprinkle the lettuce seeds. Push them down. You don't even have to cover them, and um, they're going to sprout within a couple of days. So you guys are going to absolutely love growing your own lettuce inside. And we have one more crop to talk about, but before we do that, I see another super chat. And this is from someone very near and dear to my heart, Luz. She's here every single week. Her daughter is just amazing growing a garden. Um, and I think the purple Cali Kim Smart Pots, right, Luz? And she just super chatted, $4.99. My daughter is loving her time in the garden and loves watching your videos. Luz, thank you so much. You are always such a huge encouragement and supporter. You send me pictures of you and your daughter gardening and it just warms my heart so much. It just really, guys, these kind of comments, Luz's comment and the comments on the video over the weekend really help keep um, Camera Guy and I motivated to keep making the videos and keep um, offering the garden tips for you guys. So thank you so much. And yes, Camera Guy saying big hugs, definitely big hugs. Okay, third crop to grow indoors in the winter time. And this is, well, they're all my favorites, but this one I, I love because you can harvest it literally in about a week and you do not need a grow light. And guys, these are microgreens. And aren't these cute? I just planted these on Thursday morning before we left for our trip. These are radish microgreens and they're just planted in a little teacup here. I absolutely love it. Just set it on my windowsill before we left and when we got back yesterday, look what I came home to. Isn't this adorable? The great thing about microgreens is you don't necessarily need drainage holes. So you can plant them in all kinds of fun containers because you're not growing these to um, full size. The whole point is you're harvesting them at a small, small size. So you really don't have to worry about, um, you know, drainage holes. So I planted some, uh, I think these are a kale also on Thursday. These are a little bit slower to grow, but they'll still be ready to harvest in about a week. But these radishes are absolutely crazy. So what I want you guys to do is check out the Indoor Garden series. Um, we posted that series about a year ago and it'll tell you exactly how to grow lettuce let's see i think we might have herbs in that series also microgreens um indoors in the winter time and you guys are going to absolutely love it just believe me it's going to give you such a lift to see these cute little things growing on your windowsill when it's too cold to grow outside so these i like to eat in um like i'll pop them on scrambled eggs in the morning maybe i'll put them on a top of a salad or on top of soup because i love soup when it's cold so um, guys, grab yourself one of the microgreen seed collections. I have one of those on my website as well. And it's got nine different varieties in it for you, to, for you to plant. So what I wanna hear from you guys in the chat, what containers do you like to grow your microgreens in? I'm gonna look around and find some other fun things around the house. You don't have to spend a lot of money and it's so quick and simple to, um, to grow them. And in fact, I would love to see pictures on Instagram um, of containers that you guys like to grow microgreens in. Make sure that you tag me in it so that um, I can see them and I'd love to get some new ideas. Okay, let's see what questions we have from Christian Brown. Hi, Christian. Have you ever planted a cabbage before? My name is Christian Brown from Myrtle Beach. Welcome, Christian. So glad that you're here. And I can never get a perfect, a perfect head. Okay, Christian, yes, I have planted cabbage. I actually have some planted right behind me here. Um, I have it, you can see under the shade cloth right behind me. And we do have a tough time here in our warm, warm climate getting really good heads of cabbage. Cabbage likes uh, temperatures of 75 degrees or below. 
thought I saw a little frog over here. <laughs> and um, I'm sure you have the same issue in Florida as we do here, is that we have a lot of really warm days in the winter time. And cabbage doesn't like the heat. So what I like to do is grow a smaller variety. The variety that I'm growing is called Red, uh, Red Express, I believe is the name. It's in my fall garden seed collection. And it's a smaller type of head, so it doesn't take quite as long to come to maturity. So it's always a little bit hit and miss with cabbage, but definitely try a smaller variety. Hit and miss with cabbage in a warm winter climate, that is. So try a smaller uh, type variety and maybe you'll have better luck. Now, for those of you that live in a colder um, climate, let me know what variety of cabbage you like and if you have any tips for getting good cabbage um, in a, a cooler climate as well. I'd love to hear it. Okay, let's see here. Uh, what other questions do we have in the chat? And can I bring outdoor, oh, here's from Jack. Hey Jack, how you doing? Can I bring outdoor plants inside during the winter or will it be too much of a shock for them? Okay, um, yes, you can. I, the only issue I would have is you do wanna check very carefully for bugs. Um, I've brought some smaller plants indoors like the uh, Tiny Tim tomatoes. Sometimes I'll bring my pots of lettuce inside, but you do want to check very carefully for bugs because you do not want to bring those bugs into your house. So I would really spray them off really well, check the soil. Um, you may even want to sprinkle some cinnamon around the soil to really help keep the fungus gnats under control. Um, and your issue also might be lighting. So you'll need to provide some grow lights for your, like if you bring a small tomato inside, it will definitely need some grow lights. So. Um, that might give you a few little tips on uh, how to do it. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say they're going to go through a lot of shock um, because if it's going to be too cold, it'll be better to bring them into a warmer environment where they will, um, well, they will still continue growing. Okay, let's see here. Any other questions in the chat? You're welcome, Jack, very much. And yes, so yes, Addy, hobbies and hikes, definitely. Um, the, the bugs can definitely be an issue when you bring plants indoors. So if you have any tips for that on how to make sure there's no bugs on your plants, please pop that in the chat as well, because I know a lot of people do like to continue to grow their garden indoors. Okay, Elizabeth Barrett, hello. While redoing my garden, should I do something to previous soil that is used from Mid Cali? Okay, Elizabeth. Um, one thing you can do is if you're growing in containers, you can add a couple inches of brand new potting mix to your containers. Add some, definitely add some more nutrients when you're um, replanting anywhere. So in my containers, I add a, maybe an inch or two of brand new potting mix. I add some of the Vermistera worm castings. Um, and I do use a really good high quality potting mix because, um, called Good Dirt, if you've never used that before. It stays really loose, it doesn't get compacted, it's packed with nutrients, so you can plant in it time after time after time. It's a great investment because you don't have to completely replace your potting mix every time you plant. In your garden beds, the same thing. You definitely want to mend your soil with an inch or two of compost. One thing I really like to do here in California, and you can do this actually anywhere, is especially over the winter time, um, when you're getting more rain, um, you can spread a, a heavy layer, a couple inch layer of shredded leaves over your garden beds because they'll break down over the winter time, really bring the worms in. And that way, if you're planting again in the spring, your soil is already gonna be um, amended and really, really nutrient dense. Okay, let's see. Angela, great, you've used good dirt. They also have a soil conditioner that you can put, put into your, mix into your um, garden beds. That also works really well. Okay, oh, this is a great suggestion from Max for indoor um, growing. I have praying mantis set up that my plants sit in when I bring them in from inside so they eat all the bugs off the plants. That is absolutely wonderful. I love that. And I've actually seen praying mantis little packages at the garden center. So I think I might grab some of, um, grab some of that too. Okay, let's see. Have you ever planted, okay, Christian, I already answered your question about um, cabbages. So you wanna go back and watch that part of the live stream once it uploads to YouTube. So you can get your, your question answered in case you missed that. Uh, let's see here. Any other questions in the chat? Pat Sella, oh, check Target if you can't find it locally. Yes, Good Dirt does, uh, Target does, some Targets carry Good Dirt, although I think it's just a seasonal product in the Target, so it really does depend on where you live. 
Um, but definitely you can check their web website, good-dirt.com. Okay, question here from Nicole. How do you overwinter your Thai chilies in the garden bed so it's ready for the spring? Okay, I do have some beautiful Thai chilies growing and they have overwintered almost every single winter without me doing anything to them. But I should do a video on this actually. I would do the same thing is, number one, you could cover them like I showed you guys here with the plastic cover to help extend that season a little bit um, if you're expecting a frost. The other thing is, uh, ch uh, peppers do overwinter pretty easily. Once they're pretty much done with their production, you can cut them off, leave like one little Y at the top there. You got the stem and then you got a little Y branch and then mulch them really heavily around the, the bottom with it. Two or three inches of straw, of shredded leaves. And a lot of times what they'll do is they'll grow back once the weather gets warm enough in the spring. You can also dig them up and place them in a container and maybe uh, place them up against your house or somewhere that's a little more protected. And that also does help. So don't pull your peppers out. I would highly encourage you to overwinter them. And a lot of times they do overwinter. Okay, I'm gonna answer a couple more questions and then we're gonna sign off for the day. This has been so much fun hearing how you guys are growing over the winter too. Uh, let's see here, any other questions, suggestions? Do you use BT for your leafy greens? This is from Angela. And I have never used BT. I know a lot of people do that. Um, I never have. I believe Gary does over at the Rusted Garden. I, he might have some videos on that. So if you've ever used that, please comment in the chat and let us know how that's worked. Okay, Gina says, this summer I used something called effective microorganisms for the first time to improve the soil can also be sprayed on the leaves to protect them from mildew. Good stuff. Wow, that's great to know. It's always good to hear about products that actually do work uh, in the garden um, because of course we don't wanna waste our money on things that don't work. So that's why I like to recommend products I've used to you guys and try and offer you discount codes as well so that you don't waste your money on stuff that, um, that isn't working. Okay, Laura, hey Kim, I grew microgreens on coconut core. That's awesome. Coconut core is a great growing medium with microgreens. It will work perfectly because they, again, they grow so fast. They don't need a ton of nutrients. And you're pretty much just looking for that quick little crop that you can harvest in a week or so. Stick it on your windowsill and then snip it off and put it in uh, your soups or your salads. And here's a question from Memes Garden. What seeds do you use for microgreens? For microgreens, what you can do is you don't have to have special quote unquote microgreen seeds that just grow tiny plants. What I like to do is just use seeds that germinate quickly. So these are just regular old radish seeds. Um, these here are regular red Russian kale seeds. So just pick some varieties that you know germinate quickly, will grow fast, um, like kale, um, radishes. Again, my microgreens collection has nine varieties of quick growing seeds that you can use for your microgreens. Um, and you're gonna be harvesting them super fast. Okay, do you use cut and come again method with microgreens? Usually you can, you can get, you're gonna get one really good crop like this, and then you may get one other more, not quite as thick of a crop if you continue to let them grow. But if you want another really quick, thick crop, you're gonna to need to reseed. So go back and watch the video um, on microgreens, and you can see exactly what to do to get yours planted. And you can definitely mix different microgreens different types of seeds to get your microgreens. In fact, that's really pretty. You can get some maybe red cabbage going in here. You can get some kale and some radishes, do a little mix. And the sky's the limit, guys. Make sure that you experiment. You're gonna absolutely love the beautiful um, little crop that you can harvest. And you can even plant big, huge flats of microgreens. I know some people like to plant uh, like the storage, the little smaller storage containers that you can get at Target, the little, you know, um, not as quite as the tall ones, but the thinner ones, the not as deep ones, and grow a whole flat of microgreens. And you can grow them in a grow lights if you want, or you can just grow them in your windowsill. You could plant one of these little um, babies full of microgreens. Pretty much just use whatever you can find around your house. Don't spend a lot of money. And I saw a question there about microgreens. How long do they store for? I try and eat mine as soon as I can, but they will store for two to three days especially if you um, wrap them in paper towels. I wouldn't necessarily wash them until you use them, but if you snip them, wrap them in paper towels, just stick them in your crisper in your uh, refrigerator, 
and then eat them with a, within a couple of days just so they stay fresh and they'll be super, super tasty. But you guys will not believe the flavor of these. It's like all of the radish is concentrated in one little power packed green. So super delicious. And I really want to hear from you guys if you try them. Lily G's a question here. How do you deal with mosquitoes in your garden? We do not have a huge problem with mosquitoes here in California. It's so dry. Um, so if if that, some of you are out there in hu more humid climates, then definitely pop some um, suggestions there. Okay, question from Alina. Is it too late to start a fall garden here in SoCal? Absolutely not. In fact, Alina, now is the best time to start here in California because I know it's a kind of a warm day today, but we get our best cool weather growing times in the winter here in California. So if you haven't started yet and you live in a warm winter climate in a Southern climate like California, Texas, Arizona, get your fall garden started. It's gonna grow beautifully in the winter time. And if you're not sure what to plant, um, you can watch our video called, I think it's eight crops to plant for fall. It's in the fall garden series. And you're gonna, believe me, greens grow the best in the winter time here in the cool, um, the cooler, uh, temperatures of in Southern California. So get some started. Guys, this has been so much fun. I really hope it's been helpful for you guys. I appreciate you joining in. We do live stream every Monday at noon. So make sure you come back next week. And generally we post videos midweek and then on the weekends. So make sure you tune in for those. And don't forget about our biggest sale of the season so far. Today only 30% off with the code MONDAY at CallieKimGardenHome.com today only. So guys, thank you so much. It's been so much fun hanging out here with you. We will see you again next week. Bye-bye.